Welcome to episode 10 of the all-wheel drive uh, Mustang project. I've been busy the last month or so since the previous uh, episode doing a lot of little odds and ends and I'm going to go over a few of those in uh, this video. So let's get started. First I'm excited to say that I got the transmission back from uh, Texas Drivetrain Performance. I basically sent all the parts and a couple of boxes to them and they put it together for me, shimmed it, made sure it was all good, made sure it, was, it worked properly and actually replaced a few parts I didn't realize I needed so I'm pretty excited about that. I also picked up another transfer case because uh, I guess I'm a transfer case addict but actually it's a, from a newer charger so it's a V8 uh, police interceptor charger but I wanted a transfer case with um, a V8 one that had the CV joint output and so this is actually a really low mile like 50,000 miles on it so everything's mocked up here and I'm starting to work on the shifter uh, while simultaneously doing a few other projects like uh, mocking up the spindles. But this is an exciting step. Another exciting news, I picked up my own 3D printer and spent a few weeks figuring out how to get that working and how to print some parts. And I'm using that to mock up different spindle concepts. I'll go into actual detail on these uh, spindles in a future episode, but for right now uh, I just want to go over the fact that I am in the background here making really good progress on basically two different directions on the spindle. Even with the 3D printing to fully flesh out some of my spindle concepts I needed to be able to modify the factory front spindles. I need a way to hold the Mustang spindles, the production spindles, square in a vise so I can machine them later. So I whipped up the part in CAD and to hold it uh, from the back of the spindle and proceeded to start making some chips here. I'm using a two flute, three quarter inch uh, aluminum optimized end mill here and as you can see it makes quick uh, work of the hogging out the material. I really need to get my mist coolant set up with some air so it blows the chips out. Um, but that keeps on getting pushed down the uh, project list and uh, I'm making good progress here. I'm not making production parts, slow, so uh, slow and steady, you know, and just get the parts done and make some progress sometimes is just as important as elegance here. But as you can see, this end, end mill really hogs out the material nice. Now moving on to a uh, 3 8 end mill once again. I believe it's a two flute optimized for aluminum to make the little standoffs on top to clear the back of the spindle. And it does a very good job too, as long as I blow the chips out so you don't uh, get stuck in between the part. I'm using 2D Adaptive Clearing in Fusion 360 to generate these tool paths. Uh, I'm not even going back and making finish cuts. This is just a fixture, so the surface finish is really unimportant as long as everything's square and at the right dimension. The outside shape is really not that critical, so I'm just hogging out the material. The result of all that machining is this part here and it has four bosses on it to uh, stand off the spindle and then it has clearance for the strut mount and it also gets the part off so when I'm putting a hole through the spindle it won't machine into the, uh, into the fixture and that just simply just allows me to put it into a vise. Here you can see how the fixture plate bolts to the back of the spindle. As I previously showed, I tapped the spindle. The holes happen to be the right size for a, a 14 millimeter bolt. So basically I couldn't have a nut on the other side, so I eventually want to be able to fly cut this shorter. So I basically just tap the holes and bolts. the bolts go directly into the spindle. 
and um, as you can see it works pretty well. The whole point of making this whole fixture to hold the spindle in the mill was to have a, a way of basically holding the spindle flat relative to the mill so I can shorten up this pad and or uh, mill out the pocket to clear the CV joint and uh, looks like I was successful basically dialing around here um, there's a low spot here just inherent in the machining of the original spindle but going all the way around I'm within a thou or two of flat um, relative to the mill um, so I think I was successful now I can uh, proceed to um, modify this spindle my first uh, front spindle concept required just to create a simple hole through the middle of the production Mustang MR front spindle. So I'm just using a high speed steel three quarter inch annual here and just hogging out the middle to provide clearance for a CV joint. Put the through hole in my mock-up uh, spindle here. I still have to remove the little vestige here of the uh, where the strut mount um, kind of tapers into the body. But uh, I put a 3.6, about 90 millimeter hole through the middle here just to start mocking things up. I've kind of already decided this is just going to be a practice spindle. I'll buy another one. One of these things, it's easy to sometimes do things in CAD, but sometimes you just got to do it in real life and mock things up. And, you know, as soon as you do it, you realize you can do it better. So I'll buy another one of these, and that's not a big deal. This is all just, uh, just mock up and practice. The point of machining the hole in the MR spindle was to mock up the simple concept I covered in episode 9, which is basically using an MR bearing hub and a rear explorer CV joint. This doesn't work and I cover that in more detail in the last episode. But, you know, I just had to try it and uh, now I'm moving on to uh, I think much better concepts that I will show in a future episode um, foreshadowed by those 3D printed examples uh, displayed earlier in this episode. Well, that's a wrap on episode 10 of the Alville Drive Mustang Project. But I'm going to throw a question out there to the audience. What would you guys prefer? Um, shorter videos on, say, a weekly or every other week basis, giving you the current status of the project? Or what I have been doing, which is try to build up content to make a complete story. Like, for example, you know, episode on respawning a main shaft or an episode on, you know, tra on the transfer case adapter. Because uh, I could go either way. So I want you to leave a comment and maybe I'll change the format in the future. But uh, for now, that's a wrap. And thanks for watching. And if you want to see future videos, please subscribe. And if you like the video, please give a big thumbs up. Thank you.